She She just stole a card from my outline. Chapter two, it's the divider card for chapter two. How dare you? You've never been interested. This is because I'm doing a video and you want attention, isn't it? How dare you? Hello, tiny cinnamon rolls. I'm definitely eating chocolate. So I know what you're all thinking. What the fuck is Rachel doing a video on groceries for? Well, frankly, I am really pissed that we didn't get taught stuff like this in school. In Scotland, at least, we have a home economics class. It was basically just cooking and fabric work. Making a denim tote bag with like a iron-on design on it and mine was a warthog from Halo. I just think about all the, the things that I learned in school that I never use. All the things that would really have helped equip me for adult life. How to feed yourself. Fairly important as an adult. Kids should be taught more about how to look after themselves as human beings, you know? Like, why haven't we been shown how to do our taxes? I guess they probably expect parents to teach us that sort of stuff, but a lot of parents are fairly shit at it too, just saying. You're in a supermarket. You're scraping by, cobbling things together from your cupboard, you're eating out too much and you know you should buy something and cook it but by the time you buy all the stuff and then get home and then cook all the stuff like you're probably gonna have died of starvation and it just seems like a lot of work really you would just rather go and get chips but you've already probably done that twice this week at some point you end up just sort of standing in the middle of the supermarket being like i can't even do this like why is this so difficult can i not just go and have a cry but what about the brain science, Rachel? How about these for some stats? In 1976, the average supermarket carried 9,000 different products. I think these stats might be for America. I'm not sure. Today, the average supermarket has 40,000 unique products. 40,000. And the average person apparently can fill 80% of their needs with just 150 products. That's insane. Like that, that's so much stuff we have to make a decision about. Here's a little quote about it as well. The decision making network in our brain doesn't prioritize. Our brains do have the ability to process information we take in, but at a cost. We can have trouble separating the trivial from the important, and all this processing makes us tired. Neurons are living cells with a metabolism. They need oxygen and glucose to survive. And when they've been working hard, we experience fatigue. Every status update you read on Facebook, every tweet or message you get from a friend is competing for resources in your brain with important things like whether to put your savings in stocks or bonds, where you left your passport, and how best to reconcile with a close friend you just had an argument with. I'm gonna slip in a more relatable example for you there. Important things like deciding whether to watch Jessica Jones or The Good Wife. Important things like crying a cute dog video. So the whole point of this is to get this done as quickly and as painlessly as possible. Because let's face it, we've all got better shit to do. Like I'm not making this video because I think groceries are super interesting. I don't. So let's just figure out the most efficient way to do it once and then just keep doing that forever and never think about it again. And let's avoid this horrible decision fatigue and decision overload. So we're gonna look at when, where, what, who, and how you should shop. So when should you do it? This might be controversial, but just set a day for yourself. Do it once a week and just do it. Let's try and eliminate this reactionary shopping. That's where a lot of the stress comes in. You know you're gonna need to eat next week, right? Like. That's not gonna change. You're always gonna need food as a human. Um, but obviously if you work shifts or strange hours and stuff, that can be slightly difficult. So I'd maybe say like, put like a default day, but like understand that you may have to reschedule it, but just make sure that you do reschedule it and you make sure that you are making time to shop every week. I tend to do mine on Sundays and still when Sunday comes around, I'm like, ah, oh, I can't be bothered. I'm never like, yes grocery shopping i'm so excited and then i do it and i'm like oh right okay cool this was worth it because i've saved myself a ton of hassle where should you shop so you're gonna have a list that list is gonna kind of determine where you should go you're gonna want to think about things like what supermarket is accessible to you what kind of transport do you have think about price like do you want to go to somewhere super high end like waitrose because you're rolling in it or are you wanting to be a bit more careful with your money? Is there specialist things that you can only get in certain places? Um, we tend to shop at Aldi and Lidl because they're cheap and they have good stuff, but they don't really have a ton in terms of gluten-free stuff. So sometimes we'll head into Tesco or Asda, pick up gluten-free bread, gluten-free pasta, gluten-free cake, and then do all the rest of the shopping um, in a nearby Lidl or Aldi. What should you buy? Well, you're gonna have a list. It's a cliche for a reason. That sentence itself is a cliche for a reason. 
You kind of want to have a list somewhere that you can access it all the time. Put on your fridge, keep it on your phone, but just have somewhere where you can put things as soon as they run out. Keep updating it as you go. And then you're gonna want to just like flesh out that list um, right before you go shopping. And the easiest way I found to do this is to just give yourself numbers. Like just say, I'm gonna cook this many times a week and I'm gonna have this many easy meals and I'm gonna have this many snacks. And that really just takes the stress out of like, how much food do I actually need? And you'll find that it's actually a lot easier to cook a couple of times a week when you've eliminated so much of the stress from like groceries and food shopping and cooking and eating. I initially decided that I was gonna cook twice a week and try to cook like a lot, you know, so that I could use leftovers and stuff. And when I first made that decision, that seemed really daunting because I wasn't cooking a lot at the time. Now that I'm in the habit of it and now that I've got my system down, it's actually really easy. So my shopping list always features two dinners for the week and a bulk sort of breakfast thing. So like eggs, toast, yogurt, granola, banana or apple and peanut butter, bagels and breads with like cream cheese or smoked cheese and like parma ham or chorizo or something like that. Ross however doesn't eat as much breakfast as me, he takes his lunch in with him so he always gets bread for sandwiches and fillings for sandwiches for the week. And I found you don't even need to have a plan for what the meal is going to be um, on your list. The easiest way I found is to pick a central ingredient and um, basically pick one thing that you want to center everything around and then go out and get all the other things that you're going to need for that meal. If you suddenly are like oh man I really fancy this particular recipe but you don't actually know what ingredients you need for that, sorry mate you're not having that this week. Be realistic here okay? Don't buy anything that you don't know how you're going to eat it or what you're going to use it for. And don't say I'm going to cook every day because that's just not realistic. My list always has two cooked dinners a week but it also has one heat up meal because I know I'm going to want to give myself a day off and that's fine okay? It's okay. I know that 100% some point during the week I'm going to want something sweet. I just do. I have a sweet tooth. I love cake. I love ice cream. I love chocolate and things because it's necessary for me because otherwise I'll be really sad. So that's how you make your list. What about who you shop with? Do you live with your family? Do you live with a roommate? Do you live with a partner? Really the best thing to do unless you all eat completely separately and pay for thing everything separately just to try and coordinate and do this together. Now I understand this can be hard and people might be reluctant and they might be like oh I can't be bothered. I would say like at least try and convince them you know like say this is really saving me a lot of stress and I find this kind of difficult and I think it would be much quicker and easier if we could just do it together. There's no guarantee that they're gonna say yes but it's worth a go I think. And it also means you can split the load so Ross and I for instance obviously we get two cooked meals a week so we just take one each and it really makes things really simple because instead of oh what do you fancy oh I was thinking about this oh but what about this we just take one meal each we decide what it's gonna be and we cook it and the other person just eats it as well. So that's a really good way to do it if you can take turns like that with people that you live with. So what about how you shop? What kind of mindset do you need to be in? What are the kind of rules and tips? Restaurants don't stock their kitchens with stuff they might want to use. They have a menu, they know what ingredients they need for that menu and they stock the kitchen specifically with that stuff. And they're not cluttering up space with ingredients that they don't need. And above all, trust your list. This is gonna be slightly controversial, I think. Don't browse. Don't scan shelf by shelf thinking, maybe I need one of these things. Do I need that thing? Do I not need that thing? Don't do it. You've got your list. You already know what you need. If you don't already know that you need it, you can get by without it. And yes, I'm guilty of this too. I like to scan. I like to browse. It's kind of a retail therapy instinct. It's like a consumerist, like, reflex that we've all got. But above all, this is just time consuming. Like, it just eats your brain energy. You're just giving yourself lots of little trivial decisions to make that you don't need to. So as far as possible, try to absolutely stick to your list. Look at your list, go and get the thing on the list, come back and look at your list again and only do that. Get in, get out and go and do something else fun. Go and stick a slice of bread over your cat's face and take some pictures of it and send me them. Anyway, I hope that's been helpful. I think that I have really started to nail looking after myself in terms of digestive aspects in the past few months and it's really because of like these systems and these rules that I've set for myself. If the decision of whether you enjoyed this video or not isn't causing you too much fatigue please give it a like and um, because it really helps me out. And if you're not a subscriber why don't you subscribe? Because I've got separate shopping lists for people that don't subscribe and it involves quite a lot of liver. Aloof, alive, 
Ooh. It eats your brain energy. You can pipe down. Is that a tautology? In the supermarket. Um. Yeah. Elfie finds things to eat that don't even exist. Mm. Dear. And it's a happy time for all. You! Mm. This is not a great start, to be honest. You got something in your eye. Oh!